Hello everyone, welcome to another video of Circuit Digest. In a previous article, I have shown you how you can design your own PCB antenna for 2.4 GHz. Continuing with it, I'll talk about some of the basic design requirements for this PCB and you will learn how you can build your own ESP8285 boards just like this one. The board we have designed has many features that the conventional ESP8266 or ESP8285 boards do not have. For example, with this battery connector, you can directly power the board with the battery and be done with it. Next is the programming header. With this onboard programming header, you can connect any USB to serial converter just like this FTDI programmer and program the board fairly easy. Next, we have this onboard jumper. This jumper puts the GPIO 16 to ground. As we all know, this is a very important step to put the ESP in deep sleep mode. All this sounds interesting, right? So let's get started. Along this video, I'll talk about how all the design blocks are interlinked together with the help of this circuit diagram. But before we get there, we should mention PCB Way, who are not only the fabricators of this wonderful PCB boards, but are also the sponsors for this video. PCB Way provides high quality and cost effective PCB prototype and fabrication services. They are well equipped to handle standard and advanced PCB design and can also provide SMD stencil and PCB assembly services. They are known for their shorter lead time and very active customer response. And they also support the maker community. So do consider giving them a try for your next project. Coming back to the circuit diagram, we have 8 functional blocks. I'll go through each one and explain every block. First is the heart of the board, the ESP8285 IC. If you do not know about this IC, this IC is very compact and it has 1 MB of flash memory built into it. It is similar to the ESP8266 and ESP01 board and other features stays exactly the same as the ESP8266 board. And as a bonus, this IC is very cheap. Next is this 47 microfarad power filter capacitor and 0.1 microfarad decoupling capacitor. These two are responsible for filtering the 3.3 volt input impulse. The next block is the one which is the most important block of the circuit which is the Pi filter. The Pi filter is responsible for providing power to the RF amplifier. If anything goes wrong in here, the antenna section or the RF section will not work properly. In the next section, we have the crystal oscillator. The crystal oscillator is a 26 MHz crystal oscillator with 10 picofarad decoupling capacitor which is recommended by the datasheet. Next, we have our LNA section with the inductor L3, L4 along with the capacitor C13. This 5.6 picofarad capacitor forms a pi filter which is used to match the impedance of this antenna as recommended by the datasheet. If you have followed all the recommended design norms while designing the PCB, you need not use this L3 and L4 inductor. The 5.6 picofarad capacitor is enough to match the PCB impedance. But I have added them just because if something goes wrong, I can add some inductors and match the impedance. Next, we have two PCB jumpers. One is for the UFL connector and the other one is for the PCB antenna. As you can see in this board, we have a UFL connector and a PCB antenna. With the help of these two jumpers, you can choose any one among them. Next, we have a battery connector. As you can see, I have put three battery connectors in parallel because if you don't find a specific one, you can always put a different connector and be done with it. In the next section, we have all the headers and connectors which are used in this board. These two headers are used to access the GPIO 0 of the ESP board. And this is the programming header which is right here. The next block shows the auto reset circuit in which the two NPN transistors are used to form a circuit. When you click the upload button on the Arduino IDE, this circuit is responsible for holding the GPIO 0 to ground and resetting the board. To do that, it requires the RST and DTR pin from the UART converter. Moving on, the power section has a PCB jumper. You can desolder this jumper and save some power for your battery powered application. Next is this blue LED. This blue LED is connected to GPIO 16. This is the standard onboard LED that you can find in many development boards. 
along the LED you can see the 0 ohm resistor by using this resistor you can directly put the GPIO 16 to ground and as you may know this is a very important step to put this board into deep sleep mode. Next we have the voltage divider for the ADC. As you might know the maximum input voltage in the ADC pin of an ESP8266 or 8285 board is 1 volt. So to change the range of the input voltage from 3.3 volt to 1 volt a voltage divider is used. The next block is for an LDO. Specifically for the HD7333 LDO which is really well priced compared to its specifications. That's why we have used it here. The maximum input voltage for this regulator is 12 volts, so you can use it without any worries. Next we have our push button. The push button is there to pull the GPIO 0 to ground. In any case, if you don't have the DTR and RST pins in your USB to UART converter, you can use this push button to pull the GPIO 0 to ground. And finally, we have some pull up and pull down resistors as recommended by the datasheet. That's it folks. As you can see the design becomes very simple if you break down the circuit like this. You can also make this board a little bit smaller than I have did if that is a requirement. When all this is done it's time to get the PCB fabricated. Mine has been fabricated from PCB way and I will show you how to do that. To order your PCBs from your PCBs from PCB way just go to their website pcbway.com. You will be greeted with a page something like this. If you scroll down, you can find many interesting offers and competitions that are currently happening. But to continue with the ordering process, go to the top and make sure you're logged in. If you are a new user, you get a $5 coupon. As you can see here, you will get a free $5 prototype. To proceed with your order, just enter the dimension of your PCB. Mine, say for example, is 50 cross 50 and I will need 5 of them. Then click on code now. On the next page, you will get a few more interesting options where you can select the type of PCB, maybe a flexible PCB or an SMD stencil or whatever you want. Other than that, you can leave most of the settings default. Ours is a two layer PCB, the material is FR4, so most of the things you can leave as default. But if you want to make things a little more interesting and colorful, you can change the solder mask color. For example, our PCB is black, so I'm going to choose black. The reason why PCB way is cool is that you can change different solder mask colors but the price of the PCB is going to remain the same for blue or red or green or yellow. The price is going to be exactly the same. So you can play around with a lot of different options and once you're done with that you can see the build time for PCB. It will be 3 to 4 days and the shipping will be around $26. And if I ship with the DHL you can explore other shipping methods and change the country to see which one suits you best. For example, FedEx is a little more cheaper than DHL and you can see in the total value over here. Once you are comfortable with that, click on the save to cart and the next page you will uh, they will ask for the Gerber files. So the Gerber files for this project can be found at the link given in the description of this video. If you have a different Gerber file, you can also attach it over here. PCBV also has a chat option where you can ask all the questions before you place the order. I'm not chanting so I'll close that now. Then click on add Gerber file and upload the Gerber. Once the Gerber is uploaded, click on submit order now. And after entering your address and completing the payment, your PCBs will arrive at your doorstep. After a few days, I received my PCBs in a neatly packaged box as you can see here. And as you can notice, the quality of the PCB is really good. There is a very small QFL package on the board which looks perfect. And all the wires, the tracks, the layers were all so good so I directly proceeded with soldering process. So now as you can see I have completed the soldering process and I have connected an FTTI module with some jumper wires. And the board is currently running a blink sketch and an onboard blue LED is blinking now. Besides the board you can see uh, my smartphone in which I have enabled the hotspot. And you can see there is no clients connected currently. So let me just upload the web server sketch from the ESP8266 example and we will see the board gets connected to the hotspot or not. After that we'll open Chrome and we'll see the hosted web page served from this board. So currently the Arduino IDE is uploading the sketch as you can see the blinking LEDs on FTDA board and now the uploading sketch is complete. And within a few seconds you will see a device in the client list. And as you can see, the device just appeared. Now uh, let me open Chrome and see what happens. And I have already connected the IP address and uh, 
connected to the USB port. So now I'll just hit on go and see whether I get the hello message from the ESP8266. And yes, as you can see, it's working very perfectly. And with this hello message from our new ESP8285 boards, I am concluding this video. Thank you for watching.